Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Chrissy Tania. So, as an extension of our previous video of a black forest cake, and in a spirit of Halloween, we're going to create something quite a little bit different. Spooky, charming, and delicious. This is basically our black forest cake that is made into a spider cake version. So your kids going to love it. Even your husband going to love it. Your wife going to love it. You would love it. To do this, all you need is basically just follow our previous video on the how-to of black forest trifle cake. We're using exactly the same components and exactly the same method of the making. So we're just going to make it in a different form. All you need from here is just a few things that you already have at your home and clear some space in your freezer and this could be yours for this Halloween. So without further ado, we're going to make this impressive spider black forest cake for this Halloween. Alright, so just to recap, we have few components from our previous video of black forest. So you need a chantilly cream or a whipped cream. You need your chocolate sponge cake that is already soaked with cherry, cherry puree, cherry jelly, cherry syrup. If you want to soak it immediately with Kirsch syrup, that would be good as well, but you might want to make it children friendly and your macerated cherry. All right, so this is basically all you need. So that's for the components. What do you need to make this? So I have with me, for the body, you need molds. But I understand that it's going to be quite difficult or it's quite expensive to make molds like this. So by all means, grab yourself either big bowls or big ladle. So you can do one of this, cover them like with cling wrap. And you can get a body like that. Or you can get use big bowls and line them with cling wrap and that can be your bowl as well. And for the little head, you can grab smaller ladles also the same concept or smaller bowls but I have silicone mold for this purpose all right so that's that the other thing that you need you would also need a set of round cookie cutters readily available anywhere in big supermarket if you are an avid baker most probably you already have this so now let's start with the body so for the spider what you're trying to achieve is this blood this cherry blood that is oozing out of the body it's going to be very impressive it's going to be very spooky and everybody is going to be impressed with this so what you need is to put that cherry blood into the body so you need that cherry jelly the cherry puree the thick viscosity that you have in our previous video that we pour on top of our trifle cake so we're going to do it put it in a smaller mold so if for example just now you're if this is your body, if this is the size of your body, you need a smaller ladle to form and insert the blood, yeah? If this is the size of your head, the spider head I meant, you need a smaller one to insert for the blood. Yeah. Okay. So all you need, just pour it in. All right, and you're just going to have to place it in a freezer, depending on how strong your freezers are. You can even do this the night before to make sure that you have time to just whack it out on the day itself. Take the mold for your body, be it a silicone mold or the bowl or the large ladle and the one for the head as well. Take your round cookie cutter and we just have to see firstly, what would be the size that fit each of the mold. You probably are expecting to have around two or three layers of your cake, depending on how much it rises up, or how thick or how thin it is. Mine is quite like around one centimeter high. So I'm projecting we're going to have around two layers for the small one, and probably around three layers for the big one in each. Okay? So just have it a little bit of a, a look-see. Okay, that's a little bit too big this one I think and potentially the second layer yep that's perfect okay all right so first take your whipped cream 
A little bit of bass. Bass. Bass as well here. And the bass as well here. All right, time to cut. All right, and you just have to layer on top, press it a little bit, the other one as well, on top, and press it a little bit. Because you're going to have half of the body filled with blood, you're just going to fill up one half. The other half, make sure that you have quite a bit of space of it. So I'm going to show you to fill half of the head and half of the body. Make sure you fill in the gap. Put in your macerated cherry. Okay, so for the next one, you just want to take the frozen part of the cherry jelly and you want it to be really flush. You want it to be really flush to your, um, to your mold, head or body mold. So just keep it a bit good press. Something like that. Fill it up again. Another layer. All right, so we're going to put it in the freezer to freeze completely. Just make sure that you know which one is which, the one with the blood and the one that without the blood. So because the one without the blood is going to be on top to make sure that you have the structure integrity from the base. So now leave it in the freezer, minimum of two hours to make sure that you have a really solid freeze on both, uh, depending on how thick your bowl is or your ladle or your silicone and how cold your freezer. Safest is obviously overnight, but based on my experience working from home, two to three hours would be enough. During this current time, you can clean up, grab some wine, have a bit of bubble bath, and I'll see you again later. All right, so now we are going to mold our spider cake. The one thing we're going to make first will be the length. So this is a trick that a lot of us professional pastry chef use, even for a competition or making chocolate sculpture and things like that. And it's made possible by Thermomix, okay? So again, you're looking for a very good couverture, a very good chocolate, um, chocolate cutlets. Put inside. All right. The same like before, we're going to use the game of hearing, yeah? This point, you're going to over blitz it to the point that you can hear it clumping. And that way, you're going to end up with a very pliable chocolate. Take off all of your jewellery, make sure you have a clean table, a clean bench. Roll up your sleeve. I will advise you not to wear white if this is your first time, okay? So put the chocolate there, close it. Make sure you have the lid. Again, listen. This time around, you can go to up to speed 10 and continuously blitzing till you hear the parts of it stop hitting the ball. Okay, let's do it together.
that's the noise you want to hear. The noise sort of like they're all clumping in together, that it stopped being hard to the bowl. And you got that. Okay, basically the heat from the movement, from the kinetic of the blade whirring, it's going to heat up your couverture and at the same time, it's blitzing it, creating this, let me show you, a little bit like a, a play dough kind of consistency, a little bit of like a clay. But bear in mind, this is still chocolate, pure chocolate, so you have to work rather quickly, yeah? So now, you're gonna need around yay much. See, if you have a good chocolate, you have a pretty clean hand because majority of the chocolate is made out of mass, cocoa mass, instead of like sugar or cocoa butter. Yeah? So just make sure if you have a stainless steel bench, that would be great. If you have a marble bench, even better. Spread out your finger like that and just like spider leg, give it a bit of a join. <laughs> That's the first leg. Okay, do it again. Let me show you again. Second one. Use one hand or two hand, just make sure you spread up your fingers so that automatically creating sort of like a joint like that. Pinch it. Spider has eight legs with little claw at the front. Make sure it's all of different length, but you know what most important? Have fun. I'm gonna continue and make eight legs, two claws. Okay, and the next stop is for us to make the glaze. So it's sort of like the chocolate skin that covers your spider. Think of it of like if you enjoy those chocolate coated ice cream, the kind of very thin skin that cracks, you know, when you eat it, that's what we're trying to make. So what you need is basically your chocolate and any neutral tasting oil. You can use the usual vegetable or canola oil or you can use grapeseed oil. The ratio is one to three of one oil to three chocolate. Scale here. Alright, so much grams of oil. So you just basically need to heat it up to around 50 to 55 degrees. So I do not like to, I don't like to heat any chocolate, especially, you know, like white chocolate. White chocolate, you heat it up for be around like 37, 38 degrees. But when it comes to dark chocolate, 55 is my top. You don't want to burn it because the moment you burn your dark chocolate, you have that brittle sort of uh, a burnt taste with it. Right, so this is the glaze, sort of like the chocolate skin. So you see that it's very, very shiny, very, very fluid. All right, so this is what you need for your spider cake. So this is the unmolded body and the head. So you need to know which one that has the blood. So this is the one that has the blood. This is the one that has the blood from the top. So just make sure that you know which one is at the bottom half and which one is at the top half. The top half will be the one with the blood, yeah? And you have your glaze, your chocolate glaze, and then you have your chocolate shaving and your chocolate legs and pincers. So what you need now is a warm tray. So I have like a pizza tray. I have like a pizza tray that I put a little bit in the oven. I still can touch it, but it's quite warm to the touch. So you can put your regular tray, you know, in the oven, you know, at 60 degree probably. Um, just to heat it up. So the purpose is to act as a glue to help me attach these two things together. The heat from it would melt the condensation and cream that you have at the top. And that would stick everything together. That's for the body. And we're going to do again for the head. So now you have the head and the body. Take your chocolate glaze.
The next part is going to be the assembling part. So you know, have you have coated the body, the head, you have still have some leftover of your chocolate shaving. If you don't, the easiest part is to go to grab your, you know, your cookie or chocolate cookie in oil and just split it again. And then that can be sort of like soil where your spider will be resting on. So with the leftover of your glaze, you know, your chocolate, your melted chocolate, grab your um, legs. And before you attach it, it's this kind of good idea to see how you're going to position it, you know, just to see whether you're going to start. Because it's how you have multiple sizes, which one you're going to attach first and which one you're going to attach second. So this sort of gives you an idea where you're going to place it on the body. All right, you can stop it here, but I think like what would be spiders without those eyes? You can grab some candies with the shape of eyes, or you can just basically grab some of a chocolate and using the leftover of your chocolate glaze, you can make the dots in the middle to make it look like it's the eye. All right, so there you have it. This is my gift to everyone who share it the same pen as we do. The world longest lockdown. This Halloween. Let's smash it. <laughs> Thank you.